Hello my fellow Briar fanatics, this is Sam the Illustrian, and this is a tutorial about re-sculpting a Briar mane. For those of you that follow my Instagram, I posted a photo a little while ago asking what tutorials you guys wanted me to work on next because I've been getting a lot of requests uh, for various different things. But between college and every other thing happening in my life, I simply have not had time to, let alone post pictures of briars on Instagram. Um, but I had a few hours today, so I will do this tutorial. What we are doing today is removing the mane of this model and adding a new one. As you can see, this model has a fairly short mane, um, and it's pretty close. It's not very thick, so it's pretty close to the uh, interior of the model. So before we start, let's go over the things you will need. The first thing you are going to need is epoxy sculpt. Epoxy sculpt comes in two parts, A and B, as you can see here. And um, I got mine online through Amazon, I believe. And about this much epoxy sculpt in a container was about $20, I think, for both of these. Um, so it's not too, too expensive, and it lasts a really long time if you use it sparingly. The next thing you are going to need is some kind of saw or sander to sand off the original uh, mane of your model. I use a Dremel tool, um, which is really handy because it's very small and you don't have to go outside to use it like a big saw. And it's much more um, reasonable than going out and hacking off pieces of your briar, which can make big mistakes in the clay. Um, and it's much faster and less messy. Or you can use the old-fashioned version, which is sandpaper. Um, sandpaper is just as good as a Dremel tool, only it takes much longer. And you're basically doing everything by hand, where the Dremel tool will do it in like 30 seconds. You're also going to need a various selection of sculpting tools. Um, these will be for when you are actually re-sculpting the paint after you apply the clay. And um, you don't have to specifically buy these tools. I used to just use a um, paintbrush when I didn't have any, which works just as well. Um, but once you use it, you can't use it to paint with again, so pick an old one or, a, or one that you don't use very often. And about this size. See how these are all, <laughs> they all harden after you use them with the clay, so that's why you can't paint with them again. But they're great for sculpting. And the last and probably the most important thing to use is water, good old fashioned water. Because when you're using the clay, um, if you don't have water and add water regularly, uh, the clay will dry out and get all grummy and stuff. And when you try to carve into it, it will curl and roll off and it's not a pretty picture. So water is very important. It does not work without water. Now if you're using sandpaper to sand off your mane, that's totally fine. Um, probably cover your floor with a towel or something because it will probably get all over your floor. Um, and it will take a while, so put on a movie or something while you're <laughs> sanding. Um, if not, if you're using the Dremel tool, please make sure to wear some kind of eye goggles or protective things over your face. Um, because the Dremel tool moves very fast and it heats up the plastic because it's moving so fast. So the plastic can be hot and it will shoot out sometimes. So please wear something protective over your face and your eyes. The Dremel tool has to be on a low setting. It does not have to be, you know, the fastest setting there is. Um, it doesn't take much to take off this clay or plastic, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to set mine on one and I'll show you how well it works.
as you can see, as I was doing it, it was kind of smoking and throwing bits of plastic everywhere, which is what it's supposed to do. Um, the Dremel tool moves very fastly, like I said before, and it's sandpaper, so when it rubs quickly against something, it creates friction and makes it hot. That's why it was kind of smoking. So you want to take breaks in between to let the plastic cool a little bit. Um, it's not super hot, like you can still touch it and stuff. It's not burning, um, but you should wear protection over your face. So this is what it does. Um, I cut it pretty close to the skin of the model. I'm trying to even out to where the neck would be. Um, so there's not supposed to be any bumps or anything afterward. And the Dremel tool leaves a pretty rough surface here. So when I'm completely done taking off the main, I will go over with a finer piece of sandpaper and smooth it down. Be careful to do it evenly and try not to push too hard on the Dremel tool because it will go through your model if you sand too much because it sands very quickly and it goes through the plastic very quickly. So be careful with that. And I'm going to saw off the rest of the main now. Now that I've finished taking off the main with the Dremel tool, the main's gone as you can see and so there's nothing left but the plastic. So what I'm going to do now is take some sandpaper and smooth out the rest of it because it is left pretty rough from the Dremel tool. So now I've sanded it down and it is just about as smooth as the actual model surface. So now I can start reapplying the new main. So when you work with epoxy clay, it's not the cheapest stuff on the earth. So you're going to use it sparingly and you can always add more later if you want more. Um, but once you mix the two together, you cannot unmix them and basically it'll harden and you've wasted a bunch of epoxy clay. So start off with small bits and I have about the same amount of each of part A and B um, and I'm going to mix them together. and. Uh, you just roll them together until they're one color. And the part B is the hardener and part A is the actual clay. So once you mix it together you have to use it um, or else it's going to harden and you won't be able to use it anymore. So now I have my epoxy all nice and blended and it's one color and now it's ready to apply to your model. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to set some water aside so it's ready for when you start using the clay um, because the water really helps shape the clay and uh, keep it at bay because <laughs> it can curl and get everywhere if you don't use water. So when applying the main you're going to work from the uh, very beginning of the main and work your way down. Meaning you're going to start with the clay at the base of the hairs up here and then bring it down and then eventually sculpt out the lines of the hair. So w before I add it I'm going to find the center of the horse's neck and take a little bits at a time and start applying it. I'm going to take about half of this and squeeze it out a bit so I stretch it. And that will be my base of the mane. Okay, so I'm just going to apply it up here and it's going to look really crappy at first. <laughs> like, yeah, that's the mane, isn't it beautiful? So you're just going to press it down in there. Okay, Alright, and then you're going to push it down a little bit, and then I'm going to add the rest of it here, about half of the rest of it, because I need to save some for the forelock. I'm going to squeeze it out, and apply some more here. Alright, so that is the beginning of the main. Now this is where the water comes in, and this is why it is very important. See how crappy it looks? and not smoothed out, well that's where the water comes in. So I just dip my finger in a little bit of water and start smoothing it out. Mm -hmm. And all the cracks will start rubbing together. So you're just going to do this and right now you're just getting the basic shape of the main. So uh, whatever position it's in you're just shaping that for the moment and then you'll do the detailing later. I'm bringing this part out a little bit so the forelock comes out and I'm going to add more later for the forelock there. Okay, so this is getting nice and flattened, so it looks like it runs into the model. Keep wetting your finger and reapplying the water. You can also use a, um, 
a paintbrush or another sculpting tool, but I find my finger is just easier and faster. Um, yeah, I'm just getting the basic shape, and also you can start pushing it down to get a little more going there. Okay, see how it just pushes it down way out in there. Just pushing it down. Pushing it down. Alright, so this is my basic shape of the new mane. And keep watering it. This also keeps the clay from cracking and leaving these ugly cracks as it dries. Um, and it just makes it a lot easier to work with if it's wet. Okay, so I'm going to make sure it's kind of flat here. And not too flat because I still need to carve the, um, the ripples and the waves of the hair into it. But just enough so it's not like an afro. Unless you want an afro. <laughs> it's my 70s horrors. <laughs> Let's see how this has come up a little bit. This needs to be a little flatter against the neck because as the hairs thin out, they're not that thick against the neck. They're only that thick at the base. So you're just going to pull it down. Pull it down. Or push it. Okay, so here's our basic shape. Now we get into the sculpting part. Now you could get a bunch of fancy sculpting tools for this, like um, the scalpel looking thing here. Um, or even these. These are cool to work with if you want to make really sharp ridges and stuff like that. Um, but typically I just use a wet paintbrush about this size, um, depending on how um, deep and how curly you want your hair to be. Um, and this one has been soaking for quite a few hours, so it's been used a lot. <clears throat> and it's pretty wet. Um, and this little tool here, I don't know what it's called, but it came with my sculpting kit. <laughs> and um, it's really the only one I use out of like 10 different sculpting tools I got. But this is really cool because it makes like these little tiny hair indents. So I'm going to use this first to make the, um, to make the uh, curls. I'm going to dip it in some water and just start at the top and just kind of start waving it down. Now it looks black like that because I used the paint this with black, but um, it doesn't matter because you're going to paint over it anyway. Okay, so I'm just going to start making indents and see how it makes an indent there. And I kind of used this little hard piece right here to run up to make the indent um, and then use the brush piece to brush it back over because it smooths out the clay, because um, sometimes the clay can curl up and make ridges like that. So I'm going to do that. And you're always pushing the clay down the neck so it gets thinner and it the hairs kind of run into the neck so it looks like it's flowing. So already this is making pretty good. And it's just repetition. You just keep going over the ridges and keep up the patterns you made originally. Okay. I know it's kind of hard to see because the color is kind of whacked out. But um, that's just because I used, I must have used this brush to paint something black. <laughs> so I'm making indents with slightly of the harder piece of the brush and then using the bristles of the brush to smooth it over. And as I'm doing this, it's pushing it down and making it part of the neck. Okay, use the brush, keep uh, wetting it. Go back to the top, do it again. And you can make it curly, you can make it straight, whatever. I'm just kind of going for a mildly curl look here. Um, and then it'll probably curl around like that at the end.
my camera died, so while I was charging, I went ahead and finished the main, which I basically did the same thing. I finished the forelock, so the main is completely resculpted now, and it takes um, about 10 hours to dry, and I usually just let it sit overnight, um, so about 24 hours, so I'll, I will prime it and color it tomorrow. So yeah, that's how you do a mane or tail, more specifically a mane. If you found this video helpful or you liked it in any way, please hit the like button and subscribe below for more content. I hope you have a fantastical day and I will see you all later, you Illustrians. Bye!